Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our service of Holy Eucharist here at St. Helen's, Helen's Church in the parish of Soli Hall. And welcome to all who are uh, taking part in this service online. We meet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Jesus said that whenever two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is in their midst. Jesus is present with us this morning, and so we can open our hearts to him and bring our concerns to him as we say this prayer together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to have our first hymn, if you'd like to stand, and if you would, if you would like to sing, you may sing behind your mask. <laughs> Please be seated. And we come before God to lay before him any burdens that we have and ask that there be nothing that separates ourselves from him or from neighbour. So hear the words of comfort our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, 
we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as God's forgiven people, let's stand and praise him in the words of the Gloria. <coughs> Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect prayer for today. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage never to lose hope but always to bring our prayers before you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Do please be seated for our first Bible reading. The lesson is taken from 1 Kings, chapter 19, verses 4 to 8. But Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Angela. Please now stand for our Gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? Then the Jews began to complain about him. Because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? 
How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Do please be seated. And let's bow our heads to pray. Let us pray. Day by day, dear Lord, of thee three things we pray. To see you more clearly, to love you more dearly, and to follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Well, I'm sorry if you're expecting Simon this morning. Um, Sue Chandler has taken ill, so Simon is covering um, at St Alphage, and I've come off the subs bench. So, yeah. <laughs> if a stranger comes to your door, two questions you might want to ask. Who are you, and what do you want? And if that person is a stranger, you might want to make an instant assessment judging by their clothing, their colour of their skin, their accent, or whatever. So who are you, and what do you want? How do you define others, and how do you define yourself? Who are you? Do you define yourself by the kind of labels that might be attached to you? Do you define yourself by your qualifications, or your title, if you've got one? by your relatives, by your upbringing or your schooling or your place of birth. Who are you? Who are you? The first time Ruth came to visit me uh, in, our, in my home in South Derbyshire, very romantically I took her to our local Bible study group. Ruth made a comment in the meeting which betrayed the fact that she had, and still has, a Bristolian accent. <laughs> no heckling, please. And a lady in the group leaned over and said, Hey, you're not from round here, are you, duck? <laughs> you're not from round here. Is that what defines you? Where you live, or where you've always lived? We can be defined, others may define us, by our family and by the place that we grew up. Are you from round here? Now the same happens to Jesus. Uh, Jesus is trying to teach the crowd and they won't have it. They, they don't believe uh, the kind of things that he's saying because they think they know him. Um, they grumbled. They, they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? We know his dad, whose father and mother we know and his mum. How can he now say, I have come from heaven? Where is he getting all these ideas from? We know very well who he is. But Jesus comes to say our identity is not to be found in our successes or achievements, our parents, our upbringing, our status, achievements or qualifications. Our identity is found in the fact that you and I are children of God, loved by him, made in his image, who Jesus himself gave his own flesh for you and for me. Now I've got a visual aid for you this morning. 
very proud to display this visual aid. Um, uh, for the uninitiated, it's a Leicester City shirt. But it's, it's a kind of, 90, well, it is not kind of, it is a 1984 version. So you might say, well, there's nothing special about that. And I know Andrew might say, well, it might be okay to wash your car with. But if I said to you, this is Gary Lineker's shirt, well, immediately that becomes a bit more valuable because it's association, because it belonged to somebody famous. It's owned by somebody famous and so becomes quite valuable. Or you might go into a museum and see a pair of old smelly socks and if the label says these belong to Winston Churchill, immediately that old pair of discarded smelly socks becomes extremely valuable indeed because Winston Churchill, a famous person, owned them. We belong to somebody famous. We belong to Almighty God who loves us and cares for us. You may remember the Archbishop Justin Welby when it was revealed that the person he thought was his father wasn't his father, that his mother had an affair and that his father was somebody else. But he said, I'm not bothered. I don't care because my identity is in the love of God in Christ who gave himself for me. That is my identity. You and me, we belong to God wherever we come from, whatever our accent. And moreover, we need to see that the people around us belong to God as well, especially those who are more different from us. We are made in God's image. And before we jump to any assessment uh, based on superficial judgments, maybe we should inwardly, this week, quietly remind ourselves, this person is made in the image of God. So who are you? The second question is, what do you want? In this whole chapter, John chapter 6, we have Jesus wanting people to see what he had to offer and the crowd wanting something else free lunch forever Jesus wanted the people to see that he himself was and is the bread of life so what do we want what do we really want um, a newspaper a while back had a questionnaire and the questionnaire said I couldn't live without and then people had to fill in what they couldn't live without. So I wonder what would be on your list and on my list. I really couldn't live without. Well, a list of the top 20 uh, were these. The people in Britain said they couldn't live without. An internet connection, television, a cuddle, a trustworthy best friend, a daily shower, central heating, a cup of tea, and I love you every now and then. A solid marriage, a car, spectacles, coffee, I couldn't live without chocolate, or a night in on the sofa, a glass of wine, I couldn't live without a good cry every now and then, somebody said, a full English breakfast, a foreign holiday once a year, an iPhone or a pint. Well, how would you answer that? I couldn't live without. But Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Deep down, I am the one who you really want. He's essential if you want to truly find what life is all about. Maybe you would disagree with some of the things on that list. You could say, I can live without coffee. I can live without a foreign holiday. As Jesus' followers here has disagreed with him. But Jesus is saying, you can't live without me. He points out to them, he's come to feed hungry hearts. And there's a danger of ignoring Jesus means we miss out completely on what true life is all about and what we've been put on the planet for. To change the uh, analogy, those things on the list are a bit like the icing on the cake. They're lovely. But the real cake is what we need. The real cake is what we need, Jesus, the bread of life. 
I don't know if you've been watching the Olympic Games. There have been some very moving interviews where athletes have uh, praised and expressed their generosity for their coaches who've been with them and helped them. And Jesus is like a good coach or trainer, there to guide us when we've gone a bit wrong, there to bring out the best in us, someone who sees our potential because he loves us, and somebody who's there to help us to be the person who God wants us to be. He enables us to see ourselves and others in God's eyes and not superficially in our eyes. And as we recognize Jesus for who he is, we find that our deepest needs are met in him, the bread of life. So who are you and what do you want? May we know who we are in Christ, loved by him. And may we want more and more of him and to acknowledge we really can't live without him. Let's bow our heads to pray. The crowd thought that you were only Joseph's son, but you are God's son too, Jesus. The people thought that there was only one sort of bread, but we know that you are the living bread. The religious leaders thought that you were just a man of your time, but we know you are the man for all time and for all eternity. Help us to be like you and to want more of you. For you are our inspiration, our role model, and our saviour. Amen. So may we now stand and renew our faith and trust in God, in our identity in him, as we say the words of the creed. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith, and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit for our prayers of intercession. I am the living bread of life that comes from heaven. Lord, you have sustained us through the ages with the bread of life. Elijah, in his despair in the wilderness, was renewed, as, was, as were the Israelites in their flight from Egypt. Sustain us, please, Lord, in our faith journey. We pray for our church, giving thanks that we can come to your table, as did your disciples at the Last Supper. Renew your church throughout the world. Unite all Christians in fellowship and faith, in prayer and in the joy of worship. Bless all church families, especially where there is disharmony. We ask your blessing on our own parish with its many challenges. We ask that the right rector may, in the fullness of time, be found to lead us in our mission. And thank you for the opportunity we have in contributing to the parish profile. We pray for Father Simon and his family in, this, in his very difficult task of leading our three churches through the interregnum. We pray for our church councils that they will be guided by Christian values in all their decisions. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for your world and ask your blessing on all who suffer, especially those known only to you, whether through sickness, through violence or through deprivation. 
We pray for all areas of conflict and oppression, especially in Afghanistan, and all areas of natural disaster. We give thanks for the peacemakers and those who with the courage, with the courage to speak out against injustice. Also for all those who strive to end suffering, those in the medical and caring professions all aid agencies and charities, especially Christian aid. May we, like them, be instruments of care and compassion for those in despair. As you sustain us, Lord, so may we sustain them. We ask your blessing on those known to us who are in any kind of need, and in a moment of quiet, we bring them before you. Remember, Lord, those whose situation, like Elijah, who has caused them to say, enough. Those whose hope or faith has faded, those living in and living in despair and those who are near to death show us how to minister to them and bring them comfort Lord in your mercy hear yeah. our prayer we give thanks for your beautiful but threatened world and pray for a sea change for all to make the adjustments needed to save future generations from disaster a threat which has been highlighted by scientists this week in the weakening of the Atlantic currents which could have crucial effects on our climate. Using Bishop David's prayer we ask Lord Jesus, the earth is yours and you have commanded the wind and the sea. Help us to leave behind our consumer demand for plastic and other more precious resources and move towards behaviours that are environmentally friendly. Help us to follow your lead in caring for the world you love. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We give thanks for all that the Olympic Games has brought us, the meeting of nations in friendly rivalry, the spirit of friendliness and support which has been shared amongst competitors and the joy and excitement of watching those who have reached the pinnacle of success in their field. Give comfort and hope to all who have been disappointed. We also give thanks for the lifting of many restrictions which have allowed us to take holidays and enjoy meeting friends and family. We are grateful for the success of the vaccine programme but ask that it should be the same throughout the world, especially in third world countries where health is already severely compromised. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the lives of all those who have recently died and ask that they may rest in peace, especially those we keep in our hearts and naming Sarah Noakes and Jean Jones. Comfort all who mourn, be with them in the darkness, and bring them into the light of your unfailing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Lord, grant us this day and always your spiritual bread. Amen. Thank you, Jean. Would you like to stand now as we prepare to share Christ's peace? <clears throat> Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. If you'd like from your place to offer one another a gesture of peace.
if you like to remain standing for our offertory hymn. And gracious God, you spread a table before us, nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, 
you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death, and celebrate his rising in glory. Send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Please sit as we continue in prayer. Let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. For those participating at home, it may feel strange to be invited to communion, not through the physical bread and wine that we can touch, but in a spiritual communion with God, who always comes to meet us wherever we are. There are no special words or prayers for this. All the church has ever thought necessary is true desire, lively faith, and genuine love. So come honestly before God, the way you know how. You may like to pray quietly using this prayer to help you. Lord, you stand at the door of my heart and knock. You wait for me, and only I can let you in. I believe and trust in you, and ask you now to fill me with your presence. Feed me with your body, and unite me in your blood that I may be your blessing to a world in need. Amen.
So would you like now please to stand as we prepare to receive the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. pilgrimage you have willed that the gate of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you look upon us with your favor that we who follow the path of your will may never wander from the way of life through Jesus Christ our Lord amen we pray together Lord we have broken your bread and received your life by the power of your spirit Keep us always in your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
for the notices in our final hymn. I have some bands of marriage to publish. I published the bands of marriage between Simon James Bacon and Emily Georgina Clapham of St Michael's Hall Green and with a qualifying connection to this parish. This is for the third time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. So let us bow our heads to pray for Simon and Emily as they prepare for their marriage. Lord of love, we pray for Simon and Emily. Be with them in all their preparations and on their wedding day. Give them your love in their hearts throughout their married life together. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I think Keith has some notices for us. Thank you, Keith. Morning, everyone. Okay. Lovely to see you all here. And as you know, being Christians, it's a question of always doing things. So, first off, we would like you to come next week. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope to see you all next week. Um, there is an incentive, because I'm reliably informed, that coffee will be served next week. So, there we go. Um, the other thing is something we've been banging on about for the last couple of weeks, which is the consultation about the profile for the new rector. Now, <clears throat> I'm informed that of St. Helens, only eight people have responded saying which church they belong to. And of St. Michael's, it's nine. <laughs> now, that may, now, there may be some more because um, they haven't stated which church they belong to. So those are the ones we know about who stated which church they're from. The point about it is, <clears throat> we've got a new rector, he needs to know what we want done. And you can either take the view of what you want done for your individual church, or for the parish as a whole. It's up to you. But, if you haven't done one already online, can you please take a form, one of these, fill it in and send it back. There's more out on the table, but it is important because if he starts, or she, starts doing the wrong thing, you can't complain. <laughs> so bear that in mind. If you want things done, do one of these. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Now, if you'd like to stand now for our final hymn.
Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with you all. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.